And so this bill lacks both of those protections and therefore can't move forward, which is not to say that the money savings of video arrangements couldn't conceivably be created, just not this way. So it's a no. Right to counsel, very important. Thank you, Senator Squadron. Motion is report 3083 by Senator Young, no. Senator Kruger, and Senator Squadron in the negative. Bills reported. 3104 by Senator Ritchie. Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to peace officers. Senator Squadron. Uh, without wreck, and again, I would point out, even in ones where the argument is compelling, for the purpose of this committee, I really want to send that message, let's do it all at once. So, without wreck, even on this bill. No. Senator Squadron, Senator Kruger, without recommendation, the bill's report. 3,200. I'm sorry. Senator Kruger decided to be a no. no I think you always involved. decided to be a no. <laughs> Years ago. Years ago. Thank you. I, um, again, it's the same issue, the same questions. Uh, that uh, I really wish you would look at uh, beyond uh, the city of New York because, again, these are circumstances that arise that your people in your uh, city are protected. Um, but people outside the city of New York, without that uh, great police force that the city has, uh, has to make do with other uh, types of arrangements. Uh, and that's why these measures have come before us. Uh, I've lost track. We just uh, finished uh, 3104 by Senator Ritchie with uh, Senator Squadron, uh, without racket, Senator Kruger in opposition. The bill's passed. 3200 by Senator Abella. Senator, this is an act to amend the penal law in relation to vandalism of vehicles owned by uh, law enforcement personnel. Motion report. Negative votes. Bills reported. 3212A by Senator Young. Senator, this is an act to amend the penal law in relation to establishing the offenses of promoting and possessing, uh, promoting and possessing sexual uh, materials against children. Motion to report. Negative votes. Bill is reported. By Senator Golden, 3281. Senator, this is a act to amend the penal law in relation to resisting arrest uh, of a police officer or peace officer. Senator Squadron. Uh, thank you. Um, so this is another uh, creation of uh, Felon's bill. Um, uh, we've discussed this one before, but I want to be clear, there are laws on the books for resisting arrest. There are certainly laws on the books for if you're resisting arrest or anything else. Uh, acts like assaulting a police officer and other things that are absolutely appropriately and importantly felonies. But simply resisting arrest on its own, just to give you a sense, in 2014 in New York City, suspects were charged with resisting arrest in more than 7,000 arrests. Over a 10-year period, if that happens twice, you now have a felony, without any other felony action there. I would also point out that in some instances, the resisting arrest charge is actually part of a careful and choreographed and respectful uh, um, protest uh, that is uh, actually done in a way that protects the safety of the officers and the protesters, but is a, a very significant way to send an important message, an important message of civil disobedience. We're talking about potentially creating felons out of folks who do that twice in, in 10 years. It's appropriate that certain kinds of uh, uh, actions while resisting arrest are felonies. They already are in statute. It's appropriate for res resisting arrest to exist as it does in the misdemeanor world. It is not appropriate to create felons out of folks who get this charge 7,000 times, that means over 10 years, over 70,000, probably 75,000 charges of resisting arrest. Why are we creating felons out of misdemeanor level actions? This is an absolute no. Thank you, Senator Squadron. The motion is on 3281 by Senator Golden. Negative votes. Senator Kruger, Senator Savino without recommendation. Senator Squadron. Oh, uh, no. In the I negative. Bill's reported. 3324 by Senator Alonzo. Senator, this is an act to amend the penal law in relation to creating uh, a new statute dealing with dangerous driving in the fourth, fifth, third, second, and first degrees. Motion to report. Negative votes. Bill, Senator Kruger without recommendation. 
Bill is reported. 3335 by Senator Alonzo. This is an act to amend the Criminal Procedure Law and the Family Court Act in relation to notification of service of ex parte order protections upon the complainant. Motion to report. They get votes. Senator Kruger without recommendation. Bills reported. 3347 by Senator Golden. Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to reclassifying court officers and court clerks of the unified court system uh, as police officers. Motion to report. Senator Squadron. Uh, I, this is the first of two bills. Again, we, uh, in the interest of time, we will not belabor both of them. But you know, uh, police officer, this is, this is different than the peace officer bills. And in fact, we had a robust debate internally whether we sort of look for a comprehensive system on this, we do with peace officers. And in fact, if you look at statute, the definition of police officer is appropriately quite limited in the state. In fact, I have a single page here, page and a half, uh, double printed, for every defined police officer category in the entire state. Uh, sheriffs, under sheriffs, deputy sheriffs, as Senator Actuary used to be, I believe, outside of New York City. Uh, the Parkway Police Department, I, I, I won't read them all, but uh, it's specific, it's clear. Um, and uh, I, I think that, you know, we're about to propose to add two different categories right now. There's all kinds of training, over 600 hours, I believe, of training for police officers, uh, close to 200 hours, but less than 200 hours for peace officers. I think that if you look at the cost to get to the level of training necessary for police officers to the uh, different uh, uh, entities that supervise these, if you look at the limit of the list, I think that adding police officer categories may be wise, may not, but it's the sort of thing that requires a hearing and a consideration and not, 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 not sort of moving bills through in the way we do here, or even we potentially could with peace officers. Because I would say that the peace officer argument as made today has given me a lot to think about. The, the creating police officer categories should be done very carefully. We should make sure that the authorizing entity is ready to supervise and train police officers, because it's a very significant set of powers. Uh, that you know I, we think is wisely given today, and so I am uh, on both of these bills a no at the moment. Though I could certainly be convinced in the future. Senator is your concern that the, the the proposal to add court officers and/or corrections officers, which is the next bill, to the list of police officers under the law? that they might not have the requisite training or the same length of time that a police officer. So for instance, in New York City, prior to becoming a police officer, you have to attend the New York City Police Academy, which is six months. Do you, have, do you know how long someone is so, trained to be a corrections officer or a court officer? So let me be clear. I think that for the roles that both corrections officers and court officers play, they you know, put themselves at risk every day in both instances. As corrections officers, you know, just about the most difficult job that I think one can imagine. And uh, we have to honor them for the work they do and for the training they have. That said, I am not sure that either OCA, which oversees the court officers, I believe, um, nor New York City Department of Corrections is prepared to take on the training necessary and the costs associated with that training to get, to, to get uh, equivalent training to police officer status. I just don't know. It's not clear to me from the memo here. It seems like a, a big, uh, expectation to put not just on the officers themselves to kind of continue with that level of training, but also on the court system and New York City Department of Corrections. And so for those reasons, I'm concerned about applying this status and what the impact of that is. Um, I'm sorry. I think in answer to Senator Savino's question, I have a memo that shows um, police officers complete 649 hours of training in just their basic municipal police training um, program, and correctional off correctional officers have a, have a basic training of 196 hours, which is only for care, custody, and control, not the all, all the other functions of training for a police officer. So I think it reinforces Senator Squadron's issues. It's certainly um, the reason I'm going to be voting on this. I think Senator Akshar could speak to the extensive level of training and expertise that police, those with police officer status have, which is, you know, well beyond care and control, as we well know, enormous amount of judgment required and weapons training and other things. Yeah, very specialized, um, of course, as clearly indicated, many 
Yeah. 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 Ye
Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to peace officers at Alfred University. Right. Should a report, Senator Kruger, the negative, Senator Squatter without recommendation, bills reported. 3694A by Senator Serino. Motion to report. Re Council will read. Senator, an act to amend the penal law in relation to consecutive sentencing for homicide offenses. Motion to report. Negative votes. Bills reported. 4155A by Senator Golden. Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to designating park rangers by, of New York City as peace officers under state law. And I, I would just briefly point out, in the context of, again, the point that's been made a couple of times by Senator Zolio about upstate, which, we're gonna, which I'm certainly going to think about coming out of this, I am also voting without recommendation here as it relates to New York City. However, I do know that the point made about New York City is true. There's, there's a much broader range of peace officer status in New York City than in many upstate localities. It, uh, thank you, Senator Squadron. Uh, the motion before us is to report 4155A by Senator Golden. Negative votes. Senator Kruger, the negative. Votes right. reported. 441A by Senator Kennedy. Senator, this is an act to amend the penal law in relation to aggravated promotion or possession of obscene sexual performance by a child. Motion report. Negative votes. Bills reported. 4515 by Senator Alonzo. Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to revocation of probation um, and resentencing upon a felony conviction while someone is under probation. Senator Squadron. The, the motion is to report Senator Squadron on the motion. Forgive me, no, no concern. I mean, yes, forgive me. Senator Squadron, in, in the affirmative, negative votes? Without. Senator Kruger, without recommendation. 4515 by Senator Lanza is reported. 4593 by Senator Zolio. Senator, this is an act to amend the penal law in relation to Larson. Motion to report. Negative votes. Bills reported. 4655 by Senator Lanza. Senator, Sen this is an act to amend the penal law in relation to seizure and forfeiture of vehicles, vessels, and aircraft used in counterfeiting. Motion to report. Senator Squadron. Thank you. You know, I historically oppose this bill on the third degree version of this crime. There is no dollar threshold. A uh, little less concerned about the forfeiture or seizure of someone's private air aircraft, but uh, seizure of people's vehicles, especially uh, outside of the New York City uh, itself and uh, the New York City region, can have devastating impacts for uh, work and family and health. And uh, not having a dollar threshold, just we don't need to go through all the, the inner hypotheticals there on the record in prior years, but creates too many scenarios. Uh, where you're talking about the forfeiture of the most important or second most important uh, asset for individuals for living their lives in you know what could be mistakes or lack of intent or being kind of caught up in something. So it's a dollar threshold component around the forfeiture of the vehicles that raises the big concern for me, especially in the context of areas where the car is such an important part of uh, one's life. So I am uh, a negative. Senator Kruger. Um, I, I'm also negative, and I agree with my colleague, Senator Squadron. I would just go one step further. Our forfeiture laws don't even require that the person is found guilty of the underlying charge in order to take and sell their property, Great point. which is an added concern that I think should be looked at in this state, um, that you can bring a charge and never find the person guilt, guilty and already have sold off um, their possessions. It just seems to be in the wrong order, even if one could accept the concept of the expanded um, keeping of, of the property. Senator, is it uh, not specifically as it relates to this legislative measure uh, before us, uh, but I can say that there are many aspects of uh, forfeiture that uh, are being examined. Uh, it, our uh, senior uh, head counsel, uh, Joe Messina, is uh, in discussions on some of those matters uh, in terms of, of forfeiture and appropriate forfeiture um, in, um, in settings. It's premature to discuss those now, but the committee uh, may be deliberating those uh, issues later uh, this year. 
Uh, so thank you uh, for your comments. The measure 4655 by Senator Alonzo is before the committee. Uh, Senator Kruger, Senator Squadron in the negative. Uh, bills reported. 4693 by Senator Laval. Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure laws in relation to uh, the town of Brookhaven uh, designating certain employees as peace officers. It, uh, motion to report. Right. Same discussion. Senator Kruger, Senator the negative, Senator Squadron uh, without recommendation. Bills reported. 4777 by Senator Venditto. This is an act to amend the penal law in relation to establishing crimes relating to false receipts and universal product code labels used in larceny. Motion to report. Negative votes. Bills reported. 5164 by Senator Young. Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to uh, appointing special deputies uh, that serve at the Chautauqua County uh, uh, grounds of the Chautauqua Institution as peace officers. Senator uh, Young's Bill 5164, motion to report. Senator Kruger, the negative. Senator Squatter. Uh, and this bill has historically uh, been in the negative because uh, it um, goes beyond the normal peace officer status to include uh, the status of special deputy sheriffs, um, and we, there's been a lack of, of clarity on that. So I'm going to stay negative here, but again, I do think that in the context of the conversation we've had today, it could be that you know there's a justification for this as there are with the others, and we will look at those before they come to the floor. So. It, uh, it, Senator Squadron, also in the negative, I think this measure points out uh, the fallacy of the issue. Uh, the bill is reported. Uh, just to, as an aside, I, I appreciate your search of a comprehensive measure, but frankly, uh, that's akin to just say uh, no to every measure. Uh, these are extremely unique circumstances. As you can tell, this is about establishing a, this uh, prior bill. It was about establishing peace officer status within the grounds of the Chautauqua Institution. Now, uh, that designates those grounds are, are unique, uh, they're extensive, uh, they're worldwide in their uh, notoriety, and that it, uh, it, yet it is uh, they, one size does not fit all uh, when it comes to peace officers. So that's uh, again the point we're trying to make. Having them all taken together uh, in one bill I, or one day of session, I think uh, highlights that fact. So thank you for your uh, at least uh, listening to this side of the argument. Five two zero one by Senator Croce. Vote uh, Senator Croce's bill be read. An act to amend the penal law in relation to creating the crime of stolen valor. Motion to report. They get a votes. Bills reported. 5677 by Senator Griffon. This is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to removal of certain criminal actions to veterans treatment courts. It, uh, thank you very much. Uh, motion is to report Senator Griffo's bill. Negative votes. Bills reported. 5792 way by Senator Marchion. This is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to enabling a victim of a misdemeanor to make a statement at the sentencing of a defendant. Motion to report. Senator Kruger. It's my understanding that there's not separate sentencing in most misdemeanor cases. So can I just get a clarification under this bill, there would have to be a new set of steps for misdemeanor cases where there was a 10-day period for notification for family members who might want to make a statement to the victim, who might want to make a statement? Does, and so, so one question, why do you have to build in a 10-day period, a second court date for sentencing, and is it a written statement or a they must be in court? That was a little confusing to me in the bill itself. I, there's always a sentencing, whether it be at the time of plea or whether it be at some date thereafter. Uh, there's always a sentencing. So what this bill would do in the misdemeanor context is allow uh, commentary by uh, the specified uh, class in misdemeanor cases um, uh, to give their um, thoughts uh, to the sentencing court, to the judge. Um, 
not very different than what occurs in felony cases, uh, and it uh, is a practice that the uh, sponsor believes is important in, uh, in certain misdemeanor cases. So, again, just for because I'm not an attorney of those district court, my understanding is in felonies, there's a jury trial, the person is found guilty, and then there's a sentencing date. You come back and then you make your arguments before the judge and they determine the sentence. In misdemeanors, is that the normal model? I didn't think that was. Many men misdemeanors don't involve well, many, many, many trial. misdemeanors, many misdemeanors have whether it's a plea or a jury trial. Trial, there's a judgment, a judgment of conviction, and uh, then there's a sentence, and that sentence can be in misdemeanor cases. It can be at the time of the plea, at the time of the, the judgment, uh, or it can be in a date in the future. Uh, it de depends so, on the. Right. So this bill says you give 10 days notice to the victim. So does that then build in a new time frame for misdemeanor court cases? Because now there must be a 10 day notice given. Well, it, it, it says going to it, misdemeanor it says it says if requested. So the victim or the interested party would communicate that through the district attorney's office and then the district attorney would make that request that the victim can speak at the sentencing. And in those cases, if it is requested, then yes, there would have to be a time period in the future where there would be a sentencing and this person would come in and make their commentary. And is it a oral or written or either? I, I don't know that it specifies, but generally in the felony context, it's, it's, it is um, in person. Um, I don't, I don't think there is anything that the judge, that prevents the judge from accepting written in certain circumstances. The judge controls his courtroom, so, um, but uh, I think it would be, for the most part, in person. But the whole new process would start with the district attorney's office, so they would have the responsibility to do the 10-day notification of the victims of their right to be there to that yes, in, in, in all cases, the district attorney's office is in communication with the complainant or the victim, and um, presumably during that course of communication with them, they would inform them of this right, like they do in the felony circumstance, and the victim would make a decision whether or not they would want to speak at the sentencing, and if they did so speak, then they would follow this process. And again, it's my lack of understanding of the process of a criminal case going through the DA's office. So this this may this may or may not add steps and dates for court um, for a district attorney. Um, do we know whether the DAs were asked their opinion of this bill? Or did they put a memo in pro or con? I the, the we, we usually hear from the DA's association when they oppose things, most for the most part. Um, I, I do not, um, I do not, I, I don't know if there is uh, the answer to that. I'll have to get back to you, Senator. So, Chair, I'm going to go with that. I don't think I'm opposed to this bill. I just think I'm a little confused about the added steps that the district attorney has to take to make sure that the victim is given the right to be there. Where I think today misdemeanor cases usually are done on a, you know, they're done that day, there's not a recall back in for sentencing like felonies. So I'm going to go with that record. And frankly, I'm going to ask my DA. I'm curious whether um, the DA would have a concern. I think the, uh, thank you, Senator, for your inquiry. It, it, uh, the measure is named after Emma whose father uh, was seriously injured uh, as a result of a traffic uh, accident uh, that uh, in effect resulted in traumatic brain injury and that the uh, emotional financial toll of the family was significant. Uh, the uh, plea was to a misdemeanor uh, charge of reckless driving. And that plea 
in effect, prevented Emma uh, from being able to provide input about uh, the loss of her dad uh, for all intents and purposes. Uh, it's, I think, trying to address, and I think it, it does address, I believe it does address the issue of uh, a district attorney deciding that uh, an issue may not rise to the level of, of a felony, but uh, under many circumstances, uh, it has serious implications. Uh, the criminality has serious implications on a family uh, that is victimized by that uh, resultant plea. Uh, the motion is to report uh, 5792A a by Senator Marcio. Negative votes. Never. Without recommendation, Senator Kruger. Bills reported. 6327 by Senator Marcio. Senator, this is a, a peace officer, an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to designating peace officers at Saratoga Hospital. Motion to report. Senator Kruger in the negative. Senator Squadron without recommendation. Bills reported. 6565 by Senator Alonzo. Senator, this is a act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to uh, allowing, changing the definition of New York City sheriffs and letting them uh, function as police officers. There is going. Thank you. Uh, just a clarification here. Uh, sheriffs, deputy sheriffs outside of New York City serve in a very clear law enforcement role. It's the county equivalent in many instances of the police department in New York City. Sheriffs in New York City, uh, as I understand it, play a different role. Um, and it's similar to the role of a marshal, uh, having to do with uh, uh, liens on property and seizure of property. And uh, I, in fact, have recently had a very, very positive interactions on some district issues with uh, repeated violators and scoff laws of a uh, inner city bus permit regulation legislation that Senator Golden and I passed in a bipartisan fashion together a couple of years ago with the, with the sheriff's office. I want to be clear, I, I think they, uh, in the current iteration, are, are really being very responsive and, and understanding their role. I, they didn't mention to me that they want to be police officers. I'm not sure why they would, other than the fact they're called sheriffs, which in the context outside New York City absolutely are police officers, to be very clear. So uh, I find this bill a little confusing. Do we know who's asked for this bill and why? It, uh, Senator Squatter, I've been uh, advised that last year uh, the uh, deputy sheriffs advocated for this. I, I think that uh, one of the, uh, these duties, all those, uh, in the city of New York, primarily civil, uh, nonetheless have very criminal consequences in the sense that enforcing our sales tax laws, uh, the laws regarding the, the uh, taxation of uh, cigarettes, the type of products that may be uh, uh, sold without uh, taxation, uh, they are uh, provided with the same types of uh, authorities uh, as enforcing the law, relative to enforcing the law. Um, also, domestic relations issues. Uh, that's the, the purpose is to, of, of the sponsor is to give uh, those deputies the, and under sheriffs the uh, same uh, rights and protections of police officers. So I, I appreciate that. I'm, I am a no now. I, I it, would love to have a conversation with the sheriff's office and the police department about this. You know, I worry. You know, just the final point. I worry about. The marshals coming to us and asking for police officer status too. You know, private, privately contracted folks who do not all of, but much of the same work the sheriffs do. And so, uh, for those reasons, I'll be in now. Motion is report six five six five. Uh, negative vote, Senator Kruger, and uh, without recommendation. And ne negative. And the negative, Senator Squadron. Bills reported six five seven eight by Senator Latimer. Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to designating employees of the village of Port Chester as uniform court officers, uh, designating those uniform court officers as peace officers. Motion to report. Uh, Senator Kruger, the negative. Uh, pardon me, Senator? Okay. Yes, in the negative. Yes. Senator uh, yes. Squadron, without recommendation. I didn't want to speak for you, Senator. I wasn't sure. No, I appreciate that. Uh, Motion is reported. 663A by Senator Flanagan. Senator, this is in relation to designated, designating uniform officers of the Fire Marshal's Office in the town of Huntington as peace officers. Motion to report. Senator Kruger, the negative. Senator Squadron, 
Without, re without recommendation, bill is reported. S6691A six, six, by Senator Lanza. Did I miss a bill? Yes, six, I'm six, sorry. 6643 six, by Senator Ward. Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to designating positions employed by the municipal police departments um, as uh, peace officers. Senator Squadron. So two things briefly. One, this was, I think, the most surprising of the many peace officer bills we've seen. I'm um, broken without wreck on this one, too, because I think, as frankly the chair has pointed out, uh, you know, there are unique circumstances to each. I think on this one, a much broader and deeper explanation of, the, of doctors would be, I understand there were the tactical unit, but nonetheless uh, w would be in order. I would also say we're coming to the end of this uh, marathon agenda, uh, and, and I just want to say to the chair, we have frequently disagreed in this committee, but I have learned a great deal uh, in doing it. I really appreciate it. I appreciate getting through this kind of agenda and the uh, way we have so far, and so uh, thank you for that and for the opportunity to disagree as reciprocally as I did, and even sometimes to be convinced. Well, thank you very much, Senator. Uh, motion to report 6643 by Senator Ward. Uh, negative vote, Senator Kruger. The negative, Senator without. Squadron, without recommendation, bills reported. 6691A by Senator Lanz. Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to granting uh, certain court reporters as peace officers. Motion to report, negative vote, Senator Kruger. The negative, Senator Squadron, without recommendation. 6945 by Senator Lanz. Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to designating certain employees of the Jacob Javits Center as peace officers. Motion to report, negative vote, Senator Kruger, the negative, Senator Squadron, uh, without recommendation. Before we get to uh, the last bill, I uh, want to thank uh, Senator Squadron, uh, the minority and our majority members for uh, their participation and cooperation uh, in this lengthy agenda uh, that we uh, I think it certainly crystallized a lot of issues <laughs> and that uh, uh, your cooperation was indeed uh, very, very helpful. Uh, thank you for those discussions. I'd also like to thank Rodney Powers for putting together a lengthy ad agenda. Uh, a lot of research uh, went into this and uh, thank you and our councils uh, uh, for doing uh, just that. And thank you, Melissa, for keeping all those votes in a very accurate way. Our last bill, 7029 by Senator Seward. Senator, this is an act to amend the criminal procedure law in relation to granting peace officer status to the security force members of Mary Mojene Bassett Hospital Network. Motion to report, and I'm just going to wildly guess Senator Kruger in the negative, and Senator Squadron without recommendation. Excellent. Thank you very Thank much. You.